record this. So folks, uh, we are finally here. The lecture that I do enjoy most each week, one that I'm able to have a little bit of a break in the day. Secondly, I'm able to put um, lots of my foibles into it. And I'd like to mention that uh, next week we will be looking at um, Llewellyn Bren and Ivor Bach. For those that um, don't have a penchant for trees, um, tonight um, will be very disappointed because this is very much what the lecture is about. But it's talking about the trees in an emotive way, um, and which is quite appropriate, being that we're doing the archaeology and a history of Cymru. Um, being, being a motive, I'm, I'm from this land. Um, and I would like to say that five of the trees that we look at today, they've got a very deep, uh, involved, interesting, and emotional history. Two of the trees no longer exist. Um, they've been lost over the past four decades. And one thing that if anyone's actually studied trees will know, that we've lost a great number of our ancient trees um, since the end of the last war, actually. Mm. But one by one, trees are slowly being found in woodlands that we didn't know were there prior. So, you know, we've lost a few. Well, we haven't gained them because they've already, always been there. But we've gained a few in the consciousness of the fact that we can say, actually, we'll protect these trees now. I've, um, I've actually taken I, I, lots of the lectures that I'm doing now. I'm just, I'm just looking at my, my books on my shelf. Um, and in looking at my uh, publication, Mysterious Wales, um, I came up with a very unusual tree that some of you might, might remember. But before we go any further, you'd like to know a little bit about this tree in front of you. This is known as the Pontfadog Oak to be found in northeast Wales, northeast Cymru, and the Ponfadog oak was lost seven years ago. It was typical of how we do things within this land of ours, not talking about Britain, I mean Cymru, that we have a great tree um, and people say, we gotta save it, we gotta save it, we gotta save it, put a petition to the Welsh Parliament uh, petitions rejected to put money into saving the tree and then a few days after they've had the rejection there's a terrible storm and this tree that stood for over a thousand years is blown over and overnight is lost forever and you can the sense of tragedy and the sense of emotion that I'm going to try um, um, and um, look towards today is very much painting the scene so the first tree that we can actually look at is a tree in Carmarthen. Now, Rosamond, maybe oh. either a good choice for me to speak to this evening or not a good choice. Uh, in, in that, how, do you really know your backwater in Wales? Have you been to places like Carmarthen? Have you been to places like Cardigan? Have you been to places like Wrexham? I've been to Carmarthen. Right now, have you were, were you in Carmarthen in the 1970s, lovely? No, <laughs> that's a bit of a shame actually, because in the 1970s, for example, there was a tree standing called the Merlin's Oak, and it was a rather Mer interesting tree. Merlin, Merlin's Oak, Merverthin's yeah. Oak, Merverthin being the um. Um, Camraig name for Merlin. And there it is on the map, one of, one of the four locations we're going to visit today. I did say five trees, because in one location there's two trees. Um, this is a sad image, rather, because uh, this is in the 1970s, and there's a little plaque on it. And here we go from my little publication, Mysterious Wales. At the end of Priory Street in Carmarthen, used to stand an ancient withered tree known as Merlin's Oak. And you know, that put, that put hairs up on the back of my neck saying, 
used to stand. Yeah, to Every stand. care was taken over the centuries to protect it. For Merlin had prophesied that when this oak fell, Carmarthen would suffer a terrible catastrophe. However, in 1978, the local authority decided um, to risk the consequences and remove the tree, which had become a traffic hazard. And by this time, mainly consisted of concrete and iron bars anyway. And that should be the end of the story for me today, but it's not. No. Because there's a few things to be said about it. Um, and I don't know who this chap is, but he's, he's, he's talking in the early 1970s and he's saying, this is that wonderful oak tree, Merlin's oak tree. And sadly there, um, that there is Priory Street. That is the site of where this oak tree used to stand. Very sad, really, that we've lost a wonderful monument to our wonderful past. And this is very near, if anyone knows Carmarthen, this is very near the Roman amphitheatre at Carmarthen. Um, and it's said that a new oak was planted on the site of the amphitheatre as compensation for the loss of this very ancient oak. Now, was it an ancient oak? That's the rather interesting question. Historians disagree about it being ancient, but you know what? And I know Gillian's joined us, and um, if Gillian can hear me, if her mic's off, then more the better, but if her mic's on, she can go with me on this journey tonight. And um, that nice, nice for you to join us, Gillian. This, this is an image, as you can see from the costume there, uh, this is an image probably taken sometime around 1900, 1910, maybe just before the war. Um, and there's the tree. Now, it's, it's the tree in full bloom. Um, and it's a rather small tree. So is it truly ancient? Um, it could be. The actual footprint of the tree could be ancient. Whenever we use the word ancient, I like to use it in its right context because ancient means before the Romans, um, before the medieval period. Um, and this is, the, this is an image of the tree um, just before it was removed. And if anyone can see the, my little captions at the top of the screen, it says Merlin's oak was probably planted by a schoolmaster in 16. 59. So how is it ancient? Well, actually, very much in what I've said, because um, maybe what you're seeing there is the pollarded version, the, the um, altered version of the tree that could have really ancient origins. But let's not really talk about the age of this one. Let's think about the importance that trees have within our historical landscape. One thing that I can tell you is that in Denmark, trees are protected as scheduled protected ancient monuments. If a group of people say that this tree is ancient, it's got a link with King Charles II, um, it's over 400 years old, it's over a thousand years old, right? It means something to the local people. In Denmark, they protect them. But in this sorry state of a land that we live in, Cymru, uh, we've got to put in petitions um, and try to make people see that these are rather important vessels of understanding from the past. Now, in my little bit of research about this, and I didn't want to spend too long, in the 1800s it said that in 1856 um, a local man had poisoned the tree. Um, because he didn't like people meeting under it. He sort of thought it was a pagan tree. Um, this old tree was a pagan tree. He didn't want people to meet under it. Um, and it said he poisoned it. And in 1856, it was dead. However, you can actually see that there's a little bit of growth on there. So he didn't actually kill the tree entirely in 1856. There was still a little bit of life in there. 
Uh, coming into the 1970s, because obviously for it to be of a risk to the local environment, um, it, it would have needed to have been still living. Um, and look at that little... Look at that little bit of the um, the girth, the the, the mm. base of the tree. It's actually poking out through the railings, so it's still alive. And this image was taken after 1856, so that's not exactly true. I think this is written by somebody who's saying, "Oh, you know, the tree is actually dead." Um, 1951. Look at that. Um, somebody has set light to the tree. Um, it's a it's a I don't think this is exactly 1951, um, um, but um, probably 1960, um, somebody has set light to the tree, because my caption at the top says, in 1951, a branch was broken off the tree and was taken to the Carmarthen Museum. A little bit after that, somebody set light to the tree. Um, and why would they do such a terrible thing? This is, this is such a wonderful ancient monument. This speaks... And you could disagree with it being ancient. Um, you could agree with it being ancient, but it's an old tree. It's got a time sign. People used to meet underneath this tree. Um, people used to meet underneath this tree when they still hung people in Carmarthen, not from the tree. But again, it's, it's full of those rings. It's full of those hopes and fears that humanity has. And I, I absolutely love trees. And I absolutely love what they can tell us. Now, rather interesting. Don't read the caption above. Let me read it, actually. Um, however, when, in, when, the tree itself, um, when the tree itself was removed in um, 1978, um, only eight years later was the catastrophe. The catastrophe was that in 1987, the River Towie burst its banks and Carmarthen was swamped because it said about this old tree, when Merlin's tree shall tumble, start again, I, I got distracted then a second. When Merlin's tree shall tumble down, then shall fall Carmarthen town. 1978, it was removed. Um, nine years later, Carmarthen was really damaged by this flooding. So prophecy, um, you know, the prophecy of Merlin coming to fruition. Um, rather interesting here is that um, they did save a little bit of it. 1978, the last fragment of the tree was removed from its original place and is now um, on display in the museum. I think this chunk itself originally went to St. Peter's Civic Hall um, in Carmarthen, but this is now actually on display in the museum. A chunk of the tree, it's obviously not the same thing. I'm sure you would like to see the living thing in front of us today. Mm. Now, do you, do you feel a little bit of sadness there, Rosamond? Definitely, yes. I, I do, I do, I do. Um, and I feel an affinity with trees too, and uh, that, that's really sad that such an ancient monument it is sad. It is taken sad. away. It is sad. Um, but that's in my lifetime. I was only three then. But you know, if my mother would have tied me to the tree, I could have saved it. Um, now, um, where, what we're going to do now? We're going to go on to the, um, a yew tree. So we can't do. We can't just do oak trees today. We've got to do a. We've got to do at least one yew. This is Slan Garnoy yew. Um, and there is Slan Garnoy yew on the map. Um, this again. This one's in North Wales. Um, like the others that we're going to be looking at after this, um, near Colwyn Bay. Um, and if we want to look at this, this is a, a mighty yew tree. It's wow. a fascinating, wow, yeah, wow. Big, massive wow there. Because um, the boughs of that tree, the understanding, the stories that that tree tells us are very much linked with the church. Um, those that come along to my Saturday evening, um, we, we do our little ghost stories and we, we do all that stuff. And I've mentioned, the, mentioned last week in my Lantrisson talk about um, Anne Jelster, um, who's a ghost that frequents this church graveyard. 
and, and inside the church. And this is the church itself that has a north and south porch. Uh, and if you go there um, twice a year, um, at the, um, uh, at the two, um, two solstices, um, the one in the uh, summer, the one in the winter, some say Halloween. If you, if you actually go there, you can hear the names of those being read out who are going to die um, in the next year. But it's not a wise thing because he could actually mention your name. But anyway, um, this tree itself is a really ancient yew tree. It, it's, a, it's, it's believed to be thousands of years old. Some archaeologists believe that it's only 1,600 years old. But tell you what, that's pretty old. Um, Glangenoi um, Taxus Bricata tree itself. Um, there it is. It, it's split into two. And a ra rather interesting phenomenon was... Um, that the oil tank for the church used, used to be um, sat between the, the, two, um, the two bits of the tree because um, after a while these trees seem to split and, and new trees in particular seem to go into half um, like the Fotheringay um, yew tree in, in um, Scotland. They seem to split the boughs sort of um, partition because there's so much weight there. Sort of give you, a, give you an idea of age of this wonderful tree. And again, you could, you could, have, a, you could have a meeting there. And I'm thinking maybe um, that's where we're going to have our Archaeology Cymru Lantwick major meetings within the boughs of that tree. Because it's a bigger space than we were using. <laughs> the, tree, the tree is fragmented and its core part has been lost. And the strange thing is when they removed the oil drum for the church, um, um, the, the stupid idiots took away some of the rotten bits of wood that would have given you the um, dendrochronology dating. And they only took them off to burn them. Um, it's the way these trees are treated, but the tree itself, the rest of the tree is still there today. So the girth of the tree at the gr at ground level is nearly 11 meters. So 11 meters around. The circumference, the girth is 11 meters. Now that is quite chunky. Okay, in old language, 35 feet. Um, that, I think that would be all of us hand to hand around the tree who, who was taking part today. Really massively important. Now we, now we spread out a little bit more. Um, why, why we're doing trees tonight um, is, is definitely to do with the archeology span and history. Um, because what we do find in the archaeology is very little um, wood evidence. Um, we, we, you know, when we get wood evidence in archaeology, it helps us understand the environment. It helps us understand, you know, if there's wood evidence, they're eating out of wooden bowls, for example. Um, it tells you of um, what, what truly the landscape is like. So we don't really find that in the archaeology. But when we, um, when we actually look at living trees that are actually living archaeology, um, th there's a couple of... Um, there's a couple of things that you can think about trees. If you've got a really old tree um, that's growing straight up into the sky, really tall, growing straight up into the, the sky, it's likely that that was surrounded by a very dense woodland up until the last hundred years. But if you've got a really fat squat tree like this yew tree, um, it's likely that that tree has been very much on its own for a very, very long time. And lots of people who have visited church graveyards, this one in particularly at Llan Gunnoid, in North Wales, known as St. Dig Digian's uh, Church um, Yard. Um, this one itself has been very much alone. It's seen various different things going on. Uh, and, you know, there's various different legends associated with yew tree. It, it's said that you'd have yew trees in the church graveyard because when the church graveyard was open, um, cattle eating at the berries of the church um, at the yew tree uh, would have a stomach upset and not go into the church graveyard again. That's one thing. Another reason having a yew tree is to actually ward off evil. Um, others believe that having a yew tree is a sign that before the church was constructed there, um, the yew tree was actually um, connected to the devil or all pagan ways. There are very different ways of looking at this. Um, and never, um, never be in a church graveyard um, with a group of people um, and there's a person standing along a, a yew tree and that person saying, oh, um, you can eat the berries of a yew tree. This has happened to me once. Um, and one of my group ran to the yew tree, started crunching at one of the berries. And the person, um, and I said, hang on a minute, what are you doing? And, the pers and I said, you can't actually eat, eat the nuts. You can eat the flesh, but you can't eat the nuts. Um, 
and I, I do believe that that person was quite ill after that. Mm. And the one, the point of making that is that you've got to trust these trees. You've got to respect them. They're there for a reason. The berries are there for a reason and they need to be loved and cherished. Um, now with all the data, there's the tree. Um, and this is, this is the wonderful church of Angelster St. Um, Diggins uh, church. Um, it said the tree could be up to 5,000 years old. If it's up to 5,000 years old, folks, it remembers the Neolithic period. It remembers the Bronze Age, remembers the um, Iron Age. It remembers the Romans. It remembers the Viking incursions in North Wales. It, it, it remembers um, through the footnotes of the rings. Uh, it remembers um, Office Dyke. It, it remembers um, the, the, the princes of that area. Um, it, it, it's seen planes flying above from the uh, First World War. It's got so much information. Um, and all these things are linked together. The church, the tree, the landscape. Um, all of these are not footnotes. They're really important indicators um, of time signs that help us really understand the past and get connected. I know lots of people go up to trees and they hug them because they feel they can get some of that energy. Whether you believe that or not is, is up to you. But I feel that trees are really special and important. Um, so moving on, um, we've got one last image. Um, and you know, at, at the top there, there's one, there's one alternative idea about the tree is that it's only, uh, 1,500, 1,600 years old. It was planted at the same time as the church. But I tell you what, it's still pretty old. That's still ancient, still a really old tree. You know, when, um, when people think about trees and, and they talk about trees and they sort of under, undermine their importance. Um, and, you know, taking, taking a sample, um, taking a dendrochronology sample from a tree, a tree like this, you've got to be very careful that uh, as you're drilling into the tree, augering into the tree, that you don't do it some long-term damage. So as you start to read the rings, you can understand um, in, um, in 1400 that you had a good winter or, or a good summer. Uh, you can go back to the point where plague hit Wales in 1349 to understand what the environment was like. Um, and all these things can be learned from these tree rings. But the great sadness is now this. And I'm going to come into my notes here. And sometimes you come across really, really well-written articles. Um, and this is a really well-written article, so I'm not going to bend from this. But when I, when I heard about this tree, um, um, in April 2013, being toppled on the news, um, I, I, I cried, actually, uh, because I just thought I didn't know about this tree. And this is a tree that had so much information. The Pontfadog oak was the oldest of the old revered um, oak trees in, in Cymru. It was, um, obviously we got the older yew trees, but this was, this was a very old um, oak tree. Not, I can't really say um, in the headlines that it is the oldest of all oak trees in Cymru, but it's, it's damnable in the top five. Um, so we've got to show you where this tree actually is. A bit of a miss of me not actually showing you. Um, so here we go. Um, if you know North Wales, um, Wrexham, Oswestry. I don't know if you've ever been to Llangollen, um, uh, Rosamond? Yes, I have been to Llangollen. And w when you go to Llangollen, um, if you go a li little bit further north, you, you see um, a wonderful castle up on the hill and you've got... Um, uh, you've got the Alessig Pillar, and south of that, have you ever been to Chirk Castle? I've been to Chirk, but not to the castle, how so that's go, a place to visit. How could you go to Chirk and not go to the castle? That's terrible. Well, I went on a steam train from Llangollen to Chirk. Oh, on nice. The desk, nice. On the desk trains. <laughs> nice. We didn't get off. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> this, this article now is actually from the Observer. Um, a storm has toppled the 1,200 year old tree, but why did the oak inspire such devotion among the villagers who knew it? And here we go. Hugh Williams wasn't too worried when he was woken at 2.20 by a mighty crack. The old tree that stood 30 foot behind his farmhouse 
above the village of Pont Fadog had probably lost another bow in the gale raging outside. He checked that everyone was safe and the roof intact and went back to sleep. The shock came when he went to work that very next day. Um, and I, this, this is dated, this article, Sunday the 28th of April. And I think this is probably a day or so before. So as he's going to work the next day, um, he looks up. He goes to say last weekend's storm had blown itself out, but the tree that had overlooked the Kariog Valley for over 1,200 years, surviving battle, fire, the threat of flooding, and 40 or more generations of people taking its wood for fuel and buildings. Sadly, Rosamond had toppled. But it's a more tragic story than that, Rosamond, and this is why oh. I couldn't do any better than what I'm reading. The Ponfadog oak was the oldest tree in Cymru, the third largest in Britain and one of the oldest in Europe. It was lying among the primroses in the bright spring sunshine, its roots pointing skywards, gnarled trunk collapsed, and piles of branches, decayed wood, lichens, fungi, nests, and bark in the grass all around. His massive hollow bowl had crushed a metal gate as it had fallen and the tips of his branches which had which had been about to burst into leaf were resting lightly on the purple slate roof of the farmhouse. What had been called Wales's national tree whose girth had been measured at over 53 foot in 1881 look small and shrunken now. The news of the demise of this medieval relic, which had been seeded several centuries before most cathedrals were built or even thought of, before, and ad lib in a little bit, before 1066, before the growth of the great Welsh, um, Welsh princes, much before any of the things that we can understand, probably built around the same time of Offa's Dyke. By lunch, the experts, the tree enthusiasts, um, had arrived at Pont Fadog. They marveled that the tree's branches showed six inches of growth in the past year. Yet the tree had lost all its main roots and must have only been standing because of its own weight. They mused about how much history would have, it would have seen is a part of the community. That evening, when the tourists had gone, the locals gathered around the tree. They raised a glass to it. Then the stories came out. Hugh Williams's family had lived, them for, had lived there for generations. Reports that a missing bull had once spent two days inside the hollow trunk. Two golden chisels were said to have been hidden in it. In 1886, men sat around a table inside it. <laughs> it was used by sheep, both as a shelter and somewhere to die. Children used to play in it. Victorians posed for photographs by it. And generations carved their initials in it. It was always a working tree, pollarded or pruned for its wood. It was part of the community. People built houses from it, cooked from it. That's why it lived so long. It always had a role. It was a great survivor. It had a particular fascination for children. The annual Pont Fadog Easter egg hunt would always start there and eggs were hidden in it. The brownies used to do their prom, um, used to do their promise there and it was a symbol of the local primary school and um, one of the girls who gathered um, in 2013 was only 12 years 
on the 26th of March, 1963. And she brought a diary along and she said to everybody gathered there at the roots of this tree, the big tree fell in half, she records in 1963, but it still stood. Now, where's the history and archeology span in this? Maybe that's something that Goff or Peter might be asking. At some point, the tree and the history of Cymru merged. It alone was said to have been spared when King Henry II's men raised the Cairog woods in 1165. They raised them to the ground, but they spared this one tree, this one oak tree, this marvel of a tree. The Prince Owen uh, Gwynedd, the Prince of Cymru, is believed to have then rallied his army beneath it before taking on and defeating the English at the Battle of Crogan, which was fought just two miles down the valley. And you know what? When I went to Crogan I, a, a year ago, I actually touched the other tree that we're going to look at today. No one knew quite how old um, this tree actually was. Um, how actually, how old really was this tree? Uh, it's said, um, it's said by one expert, National Trust, and you got the Forestry Commission. It said that one expert said um, it's it's only one thousand one hundred eighty-one years old only, and another expert says actually it's over one thousand six hundred twenty-eight years old. This tree remembers the great Rodri Mauer that we'll be looking at in a few weeks time. This tree itself remembers those amazing events of this land. And they say here, in, uh, they, they, they say here, I cannot find a record of an oak tree of any of the 500 species internationally, which has a greater girth anywhere in Europe, if not the world. It's quite a statement to make actually. And moving on with another image, very sad image, Rosamond, very sad. You can see the amount of timber that's there, can't you? Oh. Yes. Now this is, this is where the sadness comes in, but we'll do this. Uh, yet for all its local renown, the Port, Madog, the Port Fadog Oak was barely known outside the Kyriog Valley and only known by a few um, ancient tree experts. It was mentioned in a journey of Wales written down by George Burrow in 1862. Like most other ancient trees in Britain, it was never fenced off or protected and no one was ev ever asked to pay to see it. It was just our, our tree, Hugh Williams said in 2013, just our tree. But it was more than that. It was the national tree of our land, mm. and one of the oldest oaks in Europe. Um, and it's said that in 2013, they were desperately trying to find people who can help in propagating from the tree by either grafting on micro propagation in order to maintain its genotype. An expert from Kew Gardens wrote in 2013. In fact, the tree could have been saved just before the storm. People had put together a petition, which our silly, pointless um, Welsh, Welsh Parliament rejected. They rejected a plea for a little bit of funding to try and keep the tree integral, try and, try and keeping it together. And do you know what I say? Um, if, if I, 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 you know, if, I'm, if we're able to raise, um, you know, nearly three thousand pounds for the portable uh, museum fund from a small group of people. I'm sure we could have raised the funds back in the day to actually protect this. But unfortunately, we live in a land where people think that the state should fund uh, the preservation of these trees. Sorry for the political message. Almost all Britain's ancient trees are just as loved as the Pontfadog oak by their communities, and most are very vulnerable. Says the forum. The UK has 80% of all Northern Europe's ancient trees, 5,365 in England, 
581 in Wales and 646 in Scotland. Many are 500 years old or more. A further 100,000 trees in Britain from various different types um, are believed to exist. And of these trees, 18,535 um, might actually be classed as ancient. Tree after tree is actually being found every year. In Shropshire alone, 3,100 ancient oak trees are known to exist in Shropshire alone. It's believed that there could be 20,000. There's lots of these trees about, but this tree was a standalone tree. It was on its own. And this is why it was very important back in the day. So just reminisce, look at that. And, and then we just look at the vulnerability of this, this wonderful little tree. Um, and it's saying that in 1881, it had, you know, a huge girth on it. And, and I think that uh, when, 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 it, when there was, um, when the bow broke into two, it was possibly that it was a lot wider, but obviously that was allowed to rot away. But this was just before that storm um, in 2013. Just be uh, no, actually, when I say just before, the year before. Um, do you know what? Before we go on to the last tree and the last two trees, what do you feel about what I've said, uh, Rosamond? Oh, well, I'm touched. I'm just. I've been exploring Dinis Powers, as you know, through lockdown, and I found an old yew up at the top of Dinis Powers Golf Course that you can you can actually get inside it. But I'm looking at the picture that I've got of it here, and it it's not even half the size of that tree. So that was yeah. an incredible tree, huge. And it I'm was, sad. It was an incredible tree, and uh, you know, read, reading into this, reading into this, I, I was doing a little bit more reading about the tree. Um, and it was cut up um, and um, I do believe that they may have actually um, created a bard's chair um, for the Ice Deadford, but I don't know if they actually got onto that but the fact of the matter is the main thing is this tree was lost um, and that's the great tragedy but where we've got tragedies uh, we have little success stories and this is where we're going to actually go next so we've got um, we actually, we actually go to here, which is two miles down the road. Um, and this is actually near Chirk itself. And being two miles down the road, um, we've got um, what can only be described um, as two of the most special trees I've ever visited. And the story begins not knowing much about where we're going. Um, so, so the one that we've just looked at, the Point Fathogs here, um, these ones now are otherwise known as the um, Krogan, the, the Krogan oak trees. So basically we've looked at um, an oak tree, we've looked at a yew tree, and now we, um, we've looked at another oak tree, and now we're going to look at two more. So this is where we're going to go next. Now, do you know what? When you... Um, when you look at images on the internet, um, they're never the same in real life, right? So what we're going to do, I'm going to quickly shift forward a minute and just show you the images that we're going to look at, right? All these images. Now, when, when you go out, this was actually part of an archaeology Cymru trip to northeast, northeast, um, northeast Cymru. And when we were when we organized the trip i said i want to go to church castle um i want to go to um the alessig pillar near langotlan um i want to go to see this tree um and maybe a couple of other things well we went to church castle and we saw some archaeological excavations going on there of office dyke which was great um we we eventually after we visited this site we went to the alessig pillar but this, this to me was, was the true point of going there, was the true point um, of the whole trip because I really wanted to touch this tree. However, this was, sort of the, this was sort of the only image that we could find on the internet. And then strangely enough, before you could actually get to that tree that I've just shown you. Okay, um, here we go. Before we could actually get to that tree, 
I, we saw this one. And we, saw, we thought, hang on a minute. Hang on, the directions tell us to find the tree that I've just shown you. And you've got this really old oak tree. And I just saw that they just don't really understand this oak tree. It's just, what is it doing here? There's nothing about it on the internet. And we peered around the corner and the, oak, the, the other oak tree that is on the internet, we actually saw. And I thought, hang on a minute, there's two really old oak trees here. And then comes the story because nearby there's, um, there's a little sign and it talks about the, um, it talks about the oak at the gate of the dead. And I'm thinking, the oak at the gate of the dead, but there are two oak trees here. And at this point, I'm very confused, Rosamond, because there's yeah. two really yeah. old oak trees here, you know, yeah. really. And, and I'm just thinking, I, 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 I've fallen in love with this tree before, before anything else. Um, so Michelle's with me and John's with me from our, um, you know, our old Lancet major class. And, um, and the, 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 un the unbelievable thing is that we're looking at this tree. Um, and I'm armed with not much information. So this tree, like the other tree, uh, are the Quercus roba tree. Um, and the uh, Quercus roba trees um, are the fat squat trees, basically um, the English oak. They're English oaks. The Welsh oaks grow in England. Uh, grow in England and the Welsh oak, um, that, right, the Welsh oak grows in England and the English oak um, grows in Wales. So it's a Quercus roba. Um, and this, it, this tree itself, um, situated near Wrexham, um, it, lies, um, it lies basically in the Offers Dyke path. So we've got a little bit more information. So I always want to see Offers Dyke. dyke. Um, and hours earlier, I'd, I'd just been watching the archaeological excavations of a section of Offers Dyke. So I was really, I was really happy. Um, and then we see this tree. Um, and this tree and the other tree have to undoubtedly um, date um, to have a date over a thousand years old each. Um, so combine these have two thousand years of history, um, and it's it's located oh, not very far away from Church Castle at all. It's sort of a walking distance from Church Castle, um, and it's in. We've already mentioned the Kyriog Valley, which which we got from the other tree, um, and then before I actually before I actually do any more of the history in front of me and what this tree's got to do with history, um, I, I decided, I decided, right, like any, any good tree um, examiner, you've got to climb it. So I climbed the tree and, and there, was this, there was this nice little platform. And the interesting thing about this, you could sit on this platform, you could look at the, um, the sense of the Kyriog Valley and you could get an idea of history because this tree of the two trees um, which I thought was only one tree there, um, is, is truly steeped within an understanding of the landscape. And then it occurred to me, um, if you've got um, the other tree described as the oak at the gate of the dead, right? To have, an, to have a gateway, you actually need two trees. So obviously this tree must have been there at the same time the other tree's there, right? So the oak at the the gate of the dead um the Krogan oak oaks um is is a wonderful sort of veteran ancient tree um and it's this tree itself in 2013 won the european tree of the year award um the first um, welsh tree to be entered so obviously that's quite ironic because the other tree um the Pontfadog oak just down the road has just been blown over. So it's quite ironic that um, suddenly we've got this, the, the, the other tree being entered and that wins the award. So I'm getting everyone confused. The other tree was the one that was entered into the award, not this one, um, but these two trees are together. So why, why this comes into history is it, it's associated um, with the Battle of Krogan, um, which is from the year 1165, the oak trees at the gate of the dead. So that's what that's how we'll refer to them. Um, and look at that there. It was easy to scale the tree. And you know, you're looking at that tree, Rosamond. What 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 does that spring to mind? Oh, it looks ancient and old. It does look like a guardian, doesn't it, of a of a gateway. 
yeah, it does look like a guardian of the gateway. It does really look like that guardian. And that's very much what I was feeling. Yeah. Now, now this is that other tree. Um, and these are all the bits of branches from the other tree. Now, this, this looks a bit older. It's a bit more gnarled. And there it is. Um, but it's sort of sat there. And the other tree sort of sat alongside it. So a little bit about a little bit more of the history associated with these two trees. Um, so these oak trees are estimated to be over a, a thousand years old. And the reason why they're estimated to be over a thousand years old um, is they're described as being witnesses to the Battle of Krogan. So it says that this tree um, is probably um, um, is probably alive um, in the 800s AD and, and remembers the reign of King Ethelbert of Wessex. Um, and King Ethelbert of Wessex um, would, have been, would have been aware of the princes of North Cymru um, and there would have been those links. This is why it's mentioned. If the estimated age is correct, the oak was standing in 1165 when the Battle of Crogan was fought at the location and has therefore been described as the only living witness to this battle, otherwise witnesses to the battle. Now, you know, in revenge um, of the loss of the other trees at Pont Fadog, the interesting thing is, is Henry II's army was annihilated in 1165. The invading army, invading North Cymru, was annihilated by an army led by Owen Gwynedd. And again, we will look at Owen Gwynedd in the near future. He inflicted a defeat upon the English king and forced the English king to retreat. The battle's dead were said to have been buried in the ditch of the dike at that point. In the 1800s, this was known as Adir Bedai, the pass, or gap of the graves. And some of the graves still being visible as late as 1697, according to one account. And I think that, that one account is associated with Edward Cloyd. Now we've mentioned Edward Cloyd before, and we need to look a little bit more about Edward Cloyd in the future. Two or three parcels of land on either side of the dike were also known as Tir Ibedai, land of the graves. Although one early account from the 1800s suggested that the place was also known um, as Adir Bedwen, the gap of the birch tree, okay? Which is quite strange because this is an oak tree. <laughs> Very strange that, isn't it? What's happened to the birch tree? Um, the tree There's a gap. <laughs> it's missing it must have been in the gap yeah uh, the tree has in recent years been promoted as a symbol of the battle of Krogan. now again that's really interesting because again we're rediscovering that history which had been lost uh, the oak at the gate of the dead this one is called and i always refer to them as the oaks at the gate of the dead 2009 a plaque was unveiled, um, and strangely enough, this tree is in the state as it is today, because in 2010, the, the tree split into two, because you can see that big trunk there. So if we, if we look at that there, uh, we go back. Um, that, that's, that's the bit that's um, split into two. You can actually see um, if we sort of, go there um, that's basically where it split into two by there so so this is in 2010 but when you look at it there's branches um growing off it um which is which is rather rather, rather interesting and and if i can remember right if i'm not wrong in thinking um i think the reason why the the word birch is used um uh, is because when you go to the tree um it's it, there's there's birch trees growing out of it. I can't remember if that's correct or not, but there was something about birch trees about this, 
but you can clearly see from here that those are my oak leaves. So there's no mistake being made there. So, um, so here we go. The oak is well known. The, the oak is well known um, because the Porthmadog oak wasn't and valued local landmark um, and was one of the first trees in the world to have its own Facebook page. Although there's very little about it on the internet, strangely enough, there's been programs on, 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 the, on television, various programs, um, and the Woodland Trust entered the tree, as we know, um, and it won the um, European Tree of Award in 2013. So as we sort of go, get to the end of this lecture today, let's just look a little bit more about the, the wood associated with these trees, a little bit more about the history. Um, and when we, when, we think about, when we think about great events in history, when I talk about Pileth, the battlefield of Pileth that we did the other week, um, there's nothing at the, the Pileth battlefield to say that um, anything happened there other than the history and, and, and the church. But these two trees are time capsules of the very battle itself in 1165. Um, and what stories these trees could tell. Um, and actually, rather interesting, um, along the side there, on the left-hand side, I, haven't, I didn't take a photograph of it, which is a shame, but um, on, if I can get my cursor in, a little bit, little bit of a drawing there, um, on that side there, you can actually almost stand in it. It doesn't actually say that in the notes, you, you can actually stand in it. Um, and I think you can probably stand in it because, you know, it's that point where the wood was getting a bit rotten and this is where the, the tree split into two. So this is a rather important point. Um, and back to the nature of this, this is the one very much closer to um, the, the road itself. And the other one that we're looking at is this one. Hang on, not that one. That's, that's, the, that's the one we've been looking at. Hang on a minute. Uh, help. Help, 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 help. And that one itself. So basically, a distance between the two trees is about um, 15 meters, no more than that. Um, and you can, you can imagine where they get the name, um, the, the oak at the gate to the dead, or in other words, the oaks at the gate to the dead. Um, and if we want to think about the Danish mindset, um, key to talking about trees today is to actually say well you know we look at archaeological monuments we look at castles we look at churches and we think you know that's archaeology that's history right it's about time we started looking at trees as history as archaeology as time capsules as our heritage but unfortunately we're a bit slow in recognizing that here these are and, and you know you can laugh at this folks I can't see the, fa the expressions on your, on your faces, but these trees are as important as Caerphilly Castle. They're as important as um, um, Carnarvon Castle. They're as important as Dolbadden uh, Castle. They're as important as Caerleon because they've got so much wealth of information. And you know what? They're still alive. When these trees were living and breathing, um, today they are living and breathing today. Monuments like Caerleon, uh, monu monuments like Chepstow Castle, they're dead. They're just a load of old stone. But these things actually tell us a great deal more about the past and the environment than any of those other monuments. So what we're going to do, uh, Rosamond, um, out of all the images that we've seen today, um, because we're very close to the end, what is the image that you would want to look at again? And I would like you to say something about it. Um, well, I've left the, the old you that was... Um... That, that fell down. Can we go back uh, to that one again? Let's just go back to that one. Um, and, uh, and you mentioned that it might, might have been used for the um, Eisteddfod, for the chair, for the bard, the wood. Ah, uh, right. No, 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 no. That, that, the Porth Fadog, yeah, the Porth Fadog um, oak. Oh, you're talking about the Porth Fadog oak, not, not the yew tree. Is that the one? Yes, yeah, but this, this one is good. The, I'm loving the yews. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tennyson actually wrote, wrote a poem about yews. Uh, 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 and and the, the, the roots 
coil around the bones in the church graveyard. You are right. I, I've got yeah. that one. That's one of my favorite yeah. uh, poems. Um, but, you know, whenever, you know, whenever you're in a church graveyard and, and we've got to the yew tree and this is probably a good place to stop. Whenever you go into a church graveyard, the one thing that I always do is go over to the yew trees. Now, um, a one, one spectacular yew tree that, that, that um, you can actually see uh, is at, um, at Old Cogan Hall. You, you've seen the one at Old oh, Cogan Hall, yeah. Osmond, yeah? And if you look, yes. around, you look around the tree, there's, there's little bits of gravestones that, yes. that the tree has managed to grab, <clears throat> you know? And that's what you always see. That, um, it's almost as if the tree takes the gravestones out of the earth and says, you know, there's somebody buried here as in Tennyson, um, and the, the roots um, sort of, I, I wish I could remember the exact quote, but you know, the tree is almost as if it's, it's, bringing, it's bringing the bones and it's bringing the, 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 the stones into the heart of the tree and it's making them live and it, and, it's, and it gives off a message and it gives off a time sign. And this is why we have done this today. So you have the last word of, of the lecture before I open the mics, Rosamond. Uh, well, the, the Tennyson, I've got it written here, thy roots ra are wrapped around, about the bones. Yes, that's it. Thank you very um, much. Yeah. Thank you Which, very much. It's kind of quite, quite comforting to think that if you're buried there and you become part of the yew tree, isn't it? That the, yes. You become one with nature. But there, exactly. there's um, it's, quite, it's quite comforting, I find, the yew tree in the, in the graveyard. They are, yeah. they are, they are. Right, that's your last note. So what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to, um, uh, we're going to bring everybody on the screen. Okay, and, and I do believe that um, none of your images are being shared. So we're okay. Um, the only stuff that's being recorded is actually um, the background image. So what I'm going to do, if I can um, bring everybody's um, Turn everybody's mute mics off. Hang on. Um, okay, one second. Hang on. Hang on. One second. How do you spell? Pontfadog. P O N T F A D O G. Can you spell it again slowly? Okay. P O N. Yes. T. Yes. F A. Right. D O G. Um, and then the other one that we've just, the last two uh, that we've done um, are the Crogan Oaks, spelled lots of different ways, C-R-O-G-E-N, Crogan Oaks. Thank you. Right, anyone else, um, anyone else would like to say something? Um, Gillian, go for it. Yeah, I thought you might have mentioned the really old tree in Lantrithid. Uh, the, the tree at Lantrithid Place. And the reason why I haven't mentioned that is that's probably part of my, my ghostly talk. To be honest with you, um, there are so many old yew trees in the Vale of Gamorgan, Gillian. Um, I could just do a lecture on them. Um, and you are very right. They're, they're, yew trees themselves are very special. There was something along the lines of, I don't know if this is correct, but Wales has about 50 um, very old yew trees, over a thousand years old in church graveyards. Um, and I think the figure's a lot more than that because you could say that in the Vale of Gamorgan, Lantrithid, St. Peter's Church at um, Cogan, um, there's, there's, um, I, um, um, there's, a, there's a couple in those weird little villages north of Dinis Paris, the villages I can't remember the names of, and you, you've got lots of other church, churches in the Vale of Gamorgan that has really old yew trees, so you are right there. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else would like to say something? No, fine. Okay. Um, have you all enjoyed this tonight? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank yes, you. Very much. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, so next week we'll be doing Llewellyn Bren and Ivor Bach. Um, and I'm happy to say that the next eight that we will be doing, we're going to call them um, the, the Cymru Portable Museum Lectures. So it'll be very much linked to something that some of you have had a little bit of an involvement with. Um, hopefully I'll be seeing some of you on Saturday. Um, I'll be seeing some of you on Thursday. Um, and if none of you have got anything else to say, I'm going to give Del the last say tonight. Come on, Del. That was fascinating. Really, really interesting. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyed that.
I'm glad you enjoyed it. Can I just can I just say one thing? My right? I, I was um I was getting to one point that that um I was gonna burst out in tears and I think that was a um uh, I, I was getting really upset about the Pont, Pont Fadog tree because if that tree had come down now, um, I would probably drive up um, and I'd use my savings and save it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the money back then. It's sod's law, isn't it? Um, but, um, you know, there are other trees out there and maybe um, we can start thinking of them as being important. And you did mention the unfortunate thing about the yew trees in church graveyards is that they're the responsibility of the church authorities and, and not um, the authorities that run the rest of the country. So there, there's different laws associated with them. But we do have the ones like um, Crogan. Um, and it's, it's hopeful that we can find one or two really old gems out there. So keep looking in those woods. Um, uh, Rosamond, we, somebody was going to say something else. Go on quickly. Go. Yeah. What was the tree that bleeds? You know, they talk about the huge tree. Oh, Nevin. Nevin. Oh, damn it. It's a <laughs> huge tree, I think. Do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know what? I said to Michelle. In Sully Churchyard, isn't it? No, no Nevin. 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 Where is it? Ne Nevin. That's in West Wales. Do you know, do you know what, right? I said to Michelle while I was doing the research for this, I've got to do that tree that bleeds and it just went straight out of my head. I do apologize. <laughs> um, I, I'll probably, I'll chuck a bit of Nevin in there next week. Just, just say it's something. I saw the Archbishop of Canterbury there, Carl. Uh, did you meet the Pope? There's a joke there, isn't there? There <laughs> wasn't the Pope. The Archbishop of Canterbury, he was at Nevin Church <laughs> looking at the tree. Mm. Do, do, you know, do you know what? Um, do you know what we got life can be so busy sometimes and yeah I, I am a remiss i knew i knew i wanted to do that one sorry my mistake um um and to pat do you did want to say something else did you oh is it in nevin is that where the nevin church is yeah nevin in west wales yeah right okay so um so what what we're gonna do now we're gonna um so there's in, in, with, with me included, there's been 11 of us today, so that's been absolutely fantastic. If anyone wants to chat about anything at the end, they can do. I'm going to um, close this lecture now. Thank you very much for joining me. Looking forward to seeing you all next week. Good night, Del, Rosamond, Ellie, Cam, Gillian, Bye. Eleanor, Catherine, Peter, and Pat. Night -night. Yeah. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night everyone. Good night, all. Good night, Good night, all. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night. I didn't hear Pam's voice tonight. Um, anyway, brilliant. Mm.